Hello, everybody. Good morning, and welcome to the Pack Up Sustainable uh, Packaging Trends webinar. My name is Paul Jenkins, and I'm Managing Director of UK Packaging Innovation Consultancy, the Pack Up. I'm joined today, uh, as always, by um, my colleague Barrington Pamplin, Technical Director at the Pack Up, who will be fielding um, questions uh, towards the end. I'm also delighted to uh, be joined by Dr. John Williams, who's CTO. Uh, Aquapack. Uh, they're a UK manufacturing company specialising in a, uh, an exciting patented process for the production of a specialty polymer, which has a number of applications. John will be discussing their non-toxic, marine-safe and soluble hydropole development uh, uh, during the webinar. So what we've got planned over the next 50 minutes or so, uh, we'll have a, a short introduction on the PackUp and our Innovation Zone Packaging Database. Uh, then a, a short overview of the sustainable packaging trends driving innovation. And then we're going to split the, the um, communication of the sustainable pa packaging innovations into two parts. So part one will cover the first 10. We'll then, has, we'll then have um, John Williams from Aquapack, um, a real solution to the world's plastic pollution crisis, 15 minutes, then another 10 innovations, summary and Q&A, and then details of our next event. Please make sure you get any questions in. There's a, a box at the bottom of your panel to type in any questions for any of the uh, panelists today. Um, you'll, as always, get a link to this webinar recording post-event, so you can get the full 50 minutes recording uh, via YouTube in due course. So the pack up, uh, for those that don't know us, we sort of focus on four areas of support, so technical, um, technical support and project management, uh, events where, where permissible, where we're looking um, at our event calendar for next year, COVID-19 compliant, and that's all be in touch shortly uh, with news of our reorganized events for early next year. We also do reports. Um, our last one was Sustainable Packaging Compendium, and we're in the processes of writing our next report, which is on the refillable and reusable market, which will be out next month. So more news on that in due course. And finally, we have our Innovation Zone uh, Packaging Database, which is uh, a searchable and easy to use innovation resource with over 4,100 packaging initiatives. We upload up to 20 new innovations every week from concept to in-market launch. Uh, a real global view, we have uh, the word packaging translated in about 15 different languages. So we're, we're picking up innovations from all around the world. So a great way to keep teams up to speed and to inspire and to generate ideas. If you'd like to know more and perhaps have a, a, a perusal through the, um, the database, uh, with me, so all we need to do is email paul at thepackup.com and we can arrange that. So, in terms of sustainable packaging trends, um, no surprises that the trends haven't changed from last month. Um, I think there's been a, a few uh, sort of tweaks in terms of the, the quantity of innovations that we're, we're tracking. Uh, so the, the innovations are as categories are as follows: compostable and biodegradable, uh, biomaterial developments, uh, recycling. No surprises that recycling continues to be a, a massive area of, of, of development and progress. Um, and possibly the, the biggest area of change, um, certainly over the last six months or so, and particularly recently it seems, is on reusable and refillable packaging. Hence our uh, report next month to sort of um, to, to utilise that. So we're, we're seeing a, a, a lot of new innovations despite COVID-19 uh, coming to our attention. Three more areas uh, around sustainability and packaging, carbon concerns, that's around uh, light weighting. Uh, and reducing carbon impact, uh, also reducing waste, and uh, finally, plastic elimination for the last nearly three years. We've had a, a worldwide uh, mission, really, to eliminate or reduce the amount of plastic in brands and retailers' supply chains, and that's showing no signs of, of tailing off, really. So in terms of the, the first 10 sustainable uh, innovations uh, that we think you should know about. These are all uh, innovations that we've tracked in the last 
uh, four weeks really. So they're all new to you, um, weren't shown last time. Um, just a bit of clarification really, we're not in necessarily endorsing any of these innovations. We're not uh, saying that these are best practice examples. We're just really reflecting what is going on in the market. These are the dynamics. This is what is happening in, in the marketplace. Um, some will have more of an environmental impact than others. Um, sustainability can be subjective, um, but we, we are reflecting what is going on in, in the market. So you may find some a little bit of a greenwash, uh, but we are, as I say, just reflecting um, th those initiatives that are coming to our attention. Uh, COVID-19 has to be mentioned, as I think is probably uh, discussed in just about every webinar or in every subject in the world at the moment, uh, clearly had a massive impact on, on the packaging industry. Uh, we are seeing signs of recovery in terms of the number of innovations that are coming to, to our attention, but clearly you know, innovation teams have, um, have, have been significantly disrupted over the last four or five months, which has inevitably had an impact uh, on the quantity of innovations that uh, are coming to our attention. Um, Single-use plastic has become uh, lots of news articles about uh, the fact that uh, single-use plastic is, is, is becoming back into fashion and there's compromised and um, you know, it's compromised the, the recycling efforts um, and the, and the, the anti-plastic efforts of some. So, um, but we are seeing signs of, as I said, um, more innovations coming back to our attention. So almost back to what they were before um, the pandemic, pandemic started at the beginning of the year. So now to discuss some innovation. So the first one um, is obviously a, a lipstick pack, uh, an alum an aluminium lipstick pack has been introduced um, in a measure to avoid plastic use. The bespoke lipstick bullet from Uni Cosmetics is made from 100% aluminium, which is widely recycled material, of course, and can be reused indefinitely. Um, the, the bullet's unique push-up design eliminates the need for glue, which obviously improves recycling capabilities and other materials there. Uh, there are three end-of-life scenarios for the lipstick. First, it can be conventionally household recycled or it can be taken to local household recycling centres um, and placed in the metal bins. Alternatively, Juni Cosmetics uh, uh, allowing their consumers to send in the packaging and they will collate all the returns to ensure that they get recycled. Um, a little bit of a strange one. Very nice of them to offer this uh, service, but most people have um, curbside recycling of, of aluminium. So um, I'm not sure how much of a take up that will actually have as, a, as an initiative. The pack is certified by a plastic planning is 100% plastic free, uh, which includes all the primary and secondary packaging. Um, and the, the lipstick formula itself is also completely free of microplastics apparently as certified by the Plastic Soup Foundation. Second innovation to discuss, uh, this is a 100% vegetable based secondary packaging format and has been introduced targeting the safe transportation of products in France. Embulium is a compostable solution created with our additives grown in the southwest of the region. It combines two plant products, so fibres from agricultural origin and mycelium, which is sort of mushroom based, which acts as a natural binder. Uh, it offers good product performance, uh, shop resistance and non-flammable, as well as contributing to sound and thermal insulation. Um, they, they're all also offering the, the ability to, for it to be personalised to meet the needs of brand owners and retailers, and also in theory reusable. Um, the material is an alternative to Expanded polystyrene, which is typically hard to recycle, of course. Um, and of course, what is it striking about this is that this compostable solution offers a, a very overtly sustainable packaging alternative. It just looks uh, sort of rough and ready and sort of eco-friendly uh, in, in that sense. Third up, um, Spanish distributor of uh, tuna and premium salmon, Aram, is reaffirming its commitment to sustainability by using a fully recyclable, insulated and waterproof pack format for the distribution of its products. The Catalan company is replacing the previously used expanded polystyrene. We're seeing this a lot in, in, in food packaging, particularly in, in fish and seafood. 
the replacement of EPS packaging uh, with paper-based solutions. The corrugated solution comes via Spanish Sunbox company. The bespoke laminated boxes are made to measure and customised and have been designed to replace, uh, as I say, the, the polystyrene packaging and material traditionally used in, in, in the fish industry. Um, the boxes are easy to assemble and perfectly uh, preserve the temperature properties of the produce. Uh, there is a saving in logistic costs and environmental impact as well. The Sunbox packaging is delivered flat, uh, so requiring just a sixth of the space of the, the erstwhile EPS boxes. So lots of cosmetic innovation and, and, and health and beauty initiatives uh, this month. Um, this is French cosmetic brand Cozy, and they've announced the introduction of a range of unisex cosmetic products that will come in reusable and returnable uh, glass bottles. Uh, this is part of a significant trend, as I said at the beginning. Um, really, uh, cosmetic sector is, is kind of leading the way. We, we, we found two or three just this week reusable pack formats uh, of this type. Um, the, the returnable and reusable containers have been designed to have the lowest environmental impact, although we've not seen any LCA information to support that. Um, it's also uh, claimed to be zero waste. Um, the products are offered in pre-filled glass bottles. Customers can choose their cozy product from their preferred retailer. Once the product is finished, obviously customers can then bring the bottle back to the shop and can redeem rewards for the next purchase. The bottle is washed and sanitized and goes back into the loop to be used again. The glass bottles uh, are washed and um, um, repacked and follow strict cosmetic hygiene rules. Cozy has also got a partnership with recycling expert TerraCycle for the recycling of the pumps. And the products can be ordered online as well as in outlets in France and Belgium. Now, in March, we also reported that Cozy have introduced uh, an in-store refill process. So they are um, very much at the forefront of um, looking to introduce reusable and refillable packaging with two examples uh, this calendar year. Another health and beauty example. Um, COVID-19 doesn't really has, has not really slowed the progression, or may have slowed the progression slightly, uh, but it looks like we're all systems go in terms of uh, these innovations coming to market. Um, fragrance brands rely heavily on their packaging, obviously to create a, a premium price point as well as support luxurious brand values. So the quality of the refillable packaging is even more important. One such brand is Giorgio Armani, who is introducing a new fragrance as part of its commitment to reduce its environmental impact. The new My Way scent is housed in a refillable bottle made from recycled and recyclable materials and is said to be used sustainably sourced ingredients. Um, L'Oreal actually has a um, the, the licensed brand uh, offsets its carbon footprint to ensure that the My Way brand is carbon neutral, although no more information is available on, on how they achieve that. Now, it is estimated that over 7.7 .7 billion single-use plastic water bottles are consumed every year in the UK. However, just noted um, only yesterday uh, uh, an article that says that uh, the UK citizens have uh, reduced plastic water bottle consumption by half during, uh, in, uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic. Obviously, not being out and about and consuming water on the go has severely impacted the sector, but it is still a massive market. Uh, and all the signs are that Really, it'll go back to normal once uh, COVID-19 is, is eventually over. So this initiative is designed to reduce um, the, the number being used. Uh, Bottle Up is already an established offering in its native Netherlands market and consists of a pre-filled and reusable plant-based water bottles. The idea is to encourage on-the-go consumers to buy these inexpensive reusable bottles already pre-filled with water. So rather than recycling, the bottles are intended to be re, uh, used again and again. Um, the London bottle design uh, is filled uh, with English spring water and is targeted at the tourist market. Five p, five pence from every sugarcane-based um, bottle is sold, is donated to a charity. 
uh, working to ensure everyone can enjoy clean water in other countries. The bottles are produced by Brascombe's sugarcane based Iron Green PE. Uh, and this has been widely reported that, you know, sugarcane as a material, uh, every kilogram of Iron Green PE used around five kilograms of CO2 is saved. Yet another lipstick product to discuss. Uh, all product sectors are experiencing a change in its packaging formats to improve their environmental standing. This is Italy-based Lumsum, um, and the business has in announced the launch of a distinctive new lipstick uh, made of uh, PLA. Um, this version is uh, developed for Lumsum offers resistance to high temperatures without deforming and promises good resistance to scratches and wear and tear. A really overtly uh, sustainable uh, offering there. Consumers, um, without any uh, wording on the packs, can be uh, not mistaken that this is attempting to be more sustainable. Now, uh, toothpaste tubes are sold in their millions, of, obviously, every day, but the vast majority cannot be recycled. Their multi-layer construction makes them impossible to recycle in most municipal facilities. A lot of work has been undertaken uh, behind the scenes, uh, and, and that includes a German consumer goods leader, Henkel. Their complete oral care tube portfolio will be fully recyclable by early next year and will contribute to the brand's brand owner's goal to achieve 100% recyclable packaging by 2025. The transition will be incorporated by Spanish toothpaste brand Licor del Polo and will incorporate proprietary green leaf tube technology from the supplier of the world's largest range of beauty and personal care packaging, Albia. The solution enables the packaging to be fully recyclable wherever collection schemes are active. The tubes are technically recyclable within the existing HDPE bottles recycling streams. The unique tube making technology uses a single blown film to reduce the product's CO2 footprint. And the green leaf technology will convert more than 700 tons of packaging material per year into uh, a category, into the category. Now, this is quite an interesting one to try and solve uh, the mounting ocean plastic waste. It's certainly not going away. Um, uh, there are reports that, it's, uh, that an estimated equivalent of a truck's worth of plastic enters our seas every single minute, and that is only rising. A new packaging format has been designed that hopes to make the recovery of the materials easier. Gravity System is a Spanish design that prevents packaging from sinking into oceans and rivers. A small air chamber in the container's base prevents it from sinking. This allows it to remain afloat on the water surface and therefore more visible for collection and potential recycling. The high visibility may also reduce the out of sight, out of mind mantra that may reduce efforts to collect materials. The solution has been created in collaboration with innovation business La Fabrica de Eventos. Uh, any size container can apparently be ad adapted and it does not matter what type of plastic is used. The redesign can be created without harming the internal content and without damaging its ergonomic and functional exterior shape. The piece snaps into the bottom of the container. The system could be further improved. Um, it is claimed if the piece itself was given a reflective finish that would increase its visibility. Last one up before we speak to, to John. Um, edible films have been making steady progress in recent years with several notable developments in, that we've reported in the Innovation Zone. Just to prove that we are tracking innovations from, from around the world, this is from Belarus, uh, a, a new advancement uh, by a team of Belarusian researchers from the Research Institute of Physical and Chemical Problems of the Belarusian, Belarusian State University, that's a bit of a mouthful, has developed a new edible material. The basis of the edible films is starch obtained from potatoes, corn and beans, plus filtered water and natural additives. The edible packaging is safe to eat and it is claimed that may even have health benefits, although they haven't backed those claims up that I can see. The films may also improve the safety of products and their taste. The researchers have already proposed more than 30 different edible films ranging from 0.02 to 0.5 mil in thickness. Uh, and a, a number of different aromas and colors have been achieved via food coloring. Um, 
The applications include confectionery, spices, tea and coffee and frozen meats. Um, they're claiming that all you need to do is just add boiling water over an edible bag of tea uh, to, to dissolve, uh, but I'm not sure what you do with the tea leaves uh, that will be in the cup. Uh, BSU uh, has acqu acquired a USA pilot plant, which is used for the production of conventional films. So that's your first 10. Now over to John. Uh, John, are you able to share your screen? I think I need to stop sharing before you can. Okay. Sorry, one second. I'm having a bit of a technical issue. Should work. It's my life's ambition. Yeah, there you go. There we go. Perfect. It's my, it's my life ambition to do one of these handovers seamlessly, but they never seem to go. Yeah, it never seems to work, oh. particularly. I, I, yeah, absolutely, Paul. Uh, but, uh, oh, get in the oh, end. Job. No doubt we'll get better as we get uh, more remote. <laughs> so, yes. Anyway, yeah, thank you, Paul. Um, much appreciated to be invited to, to do this. And uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I'd like to give you just a brief introduction to Aquapack um, and uh, what we do. Um, our polymer is actually uh, an old polymer. It's, it's polyvinyl alcohol, which has been around for quite a long time, since the, since the mid-1920s in actual fact. Uh, it's a highly functional material. The, the, the challenge with it has always been to get it to process, uh, and obviously latterly, over the last sort of 40 or 50 years or so, as, as the plastics industry has developed into predominantly thermal processing, then um, all the usual suspects, PE, PP, et cetera, have obviously taken over because they're very good at thermal processing. Polyvan alcohol is, is a challenge and uh, has, has been attempted several times uh, over the years um, to, to get it to, to perform and, and, uh, and thermally process in, in as many applications as possible. It wasn't until actually uh, we came along, uh, we've been working on this for over 10 years, um, that we finally managed to perfect the method of producing the material in pellet form uh, that can then go on to different thermal processing operations, so blown fill, injection molding, thermoforming, etc., um, in a in a stable way. Not only um, a stable way, but also one which which enables you to change the performance properties of the material by uh, different hydrolysis levels of the polyvan alcohol. So. Uh, clearly, at high hydrolysis levels, it is resistant to hot water, uh, etc. And, and at low hydrolysis levels, it's soluble in cold water. So you've got you can play tunes on this material, but I'll I'll come to some of that uh, shortly. Um, I think I'll, I'll skip through this quite quickly because we all know the, the the level of the problem we're presented with in terms of the plastic pollution problem and the amount of material that we are struggling to deal with. That is entering the environment in one way, shape, or form. The majority of these materials are inevitably hydrophobic polymers, which, which cause some issues themselves, as we've seen in some of the marine interactions and work that's been ongoing. And we've also obviously got the demands on the global waste system itself, in the fact that you know lots of people do not have access to, to waste disposal. Um, so we need we need different solutions, and one of those solutions is, is change of material. And I think you can see some of the latest trends. This is not completely up to date, but but it's it, you can see where people are obviously various national governments, etc., trying to put in various bans, partial bans, levies, taxes, uh, you name it. That's kind of the stick end of the market, I guess. But clearly, we need you know plastics are extremely valuable materials in terms of their performance criteria and what they can do, and it's important that. You know, we, we really grab this and, and make sure we, we can start to use processes, materials, combinations of materials, which, which give us uh, not only primary functionality, but a bit end of life as well. And as I say, our material, it's, our, our, polyvinyl alcohol is, is unusual in the fact that it's, it is, it's petro derived currently, can be bio derived, um, but at the moment, the majority of it is, is a petro derived polymer, but it's hydrophilic. Um, so unusually in, in comparison to things like polyethylenes, etc., which are hydrophobic. 
Um, the base materials, as I say, have been around a long time. It's, it's, it's well established as a supply chain. Um, it's it's non-toxic, it's biodegradable, it's in fact used in things like tablet coatings and, uh, and, and uh, formulated dishwashing material and things like that. So specialty applications is where you find this material traditionally. And part of that is because uh, of the fact of the processability problem that you can't enter some of the some of these markets that you would like to enter with this material because of the processability. Um, <clears throat> We've done a number of, and I'm continuing to do a number of uh, studies, uh, both uh, internally and independently with universities and independent laboratories on the performance of this material environmentally. So we've done uh, composting tests and aerobic tests. We are in the midst of a two year program with Harriet Watt University on looking at marine behavior. Uh, we're doing tests currently on soil, et cetera. So there's a, there's a lot of work going on behind this because Clearly, we've produced the material now, which is entering the mainstream industry, and therefore we, we need to start to understand and, and uh, answer some of these, these questions, uh, many of which have, have not been tested uh, fully before in actual fact. Um, so what are we looking at here? Well, the, the, the water solubility and hydrophilic nature of the, of the material and the controlled uh, functionality of the material enables you to do all sorts of things, um, both on its own or in combinations with other things. Uh, so it could be combinations with conventional materials, plastics and paper. We'll concentrate on paper shortly. Um, and you can also combine it with obviously bioplastics and biopolymers, etc. because what, what this material does have is it has good barrier properties to things like grease, oil, uh, solvents, oxygen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, it's exceptional on those barrier properties. And in film form, it has excellent tensile properties and puncture resistance and clarity and printability. Um, it can be very, very well combined with paper and board, which I'll, I, I'll come to very shortly, but also it can go into things like multi-laminate. So you can, for example, laminate it and replace perhaps some of the more difficult to recycle materials in multi-laminate. So for example, we did one with polyethylene, which removed a nylon and an EVOH layer. Um, this potentially enables you to wash away under controlled conditions the, the hydropole layer and leave clean PE. So maybe a route to easier recycling in terms of plastic laminate. Just some examples of the processes uh, uh, in terms of what we do. We've concentrated mainly on the top two, uh, which is blown film and extrusion coating. Uh, and latterly, in terms of film, we, we have looked at laminates and coaxes as well with, with other materials. So you can have it as a single layer film if, if you want to as a monolayer film, or you can start to look at lamination processes or, or, or coaxes, with, which are, we start to look really interested in terms of their tensile and barrier properties that, they, that, that it can offer without often interrupting with the other end of life options that, that, uh, that people are looking for. Extrusion coating is a really interesting one. Um, because of the performance on things like cellulosic and paper and board, it's, it's got a very high affinity for these materials. So you, you've got potential to have a barrier board that, that has high functionality. Um, and then lastly, we've, we've not done too much work on this so far. There are a number of our commercial uh, um, customers that are working on injection molding and thermoforming. So we're, we're, but that's, that's a little bit behind in terms of, of where we are in comparison to the top two. So some examples of the end use applications, certainly not comprehensive by any means, but just gives you an indication. Um, we started really probably on the left hand side. So fair, relatively simple monolayer materials moving to, to laminated and coax materials in things like specialty bags. Um, uh, things like AD bags, for example, it will go through an anaerobic process, which is, which is slightly unusual for, for a polymer. Um, and uh, garment bags and so forth. Partly the garment industry was interested because it's marine credentials and, and we've moved into things like cytotoxic bags for, for clinical anti-infection uh, systems because it's strong enough to take uh, infected laundry, but then you can place it directly in the washing machine, for example, and at the right washing temperature, you can dissolve it and then you end up with clean laundry uh, non-pathogenic laundry and, and the mater our material has disappeared into the wastewater stream uh, and is biodegraded. And then on the right hand side, 
you start to look at some of the more complex packaging options that, that are available to it uh, in terms of what you can do. Some of our sort of examples uh, of, of, of who we're working with, uh, you'll see a range in there in terms of brands all the way through converters and, and distributors and so forth in the bottom right hand corner. DS Smith, you may have seen an announcement that's just come out with, with a, a collaboration partnership working with, with DS Smith on, on paperboard combination. So improving the recyclability of paperboard and packaging, I'd like to really sort of concentrate on this for the last few minutes because this is, this is an interesting one. Um, clearly the, there is a move uh, because of the plastic uh, situation, a move towards paper, but clearly to have functional paper systems requires some sort of coating or, or polymer system in there to give it barrier or tensile properties or whatever else you might be targeting. And Hydropole uh, does look very interesting in, in, this, in this application. It, um, it, it has an affinity uh, with cellulosics um, and um, the, the melt coating, which is obviously not achievable before with polyvinyl alcohol because of, because of its processability, Hydropole you can. Um, so you can direct coat onto, onto paper and paperboard um, and you obviously improve the tensile properties of the material. <clears throat> you can gain obviously heat seal where appropriate, but obviously the most important thing is you're getting barrier performance against things like oils and greases and fats and, and, and if, if required in some cases gas barrier. Um, the key thing about this is that you can place this back in the paper recycling stream um, and which is something obviously all the, all the supply chain including the consumer recognizes and is also an available method of recycling because you already have that infrastructure in place. So the material will repulp in a conventional paper mill repulping system at around about 40 degrees, which is nearly all of the, the, the repulping systems are at that temperature. So complete solubilization and uh, meets all the criteria outlined. We've done a, a, a huge amount of work in this, in this area uh, in terms of provability and what happens to, to, to it at end of life. So our material essentially dissolves in, in the pulping process um, and disappears into the wastewater treatment system of the mill. Uh, so it doesn't form any part of the mill reject stream, uh, which obviously is a costly part if you have to try and remove solid material. It's in solution, it enters the wastewater stream and it biodegrades in that wastewater system, uh, leaving the mill with access to uh, a substantial amount of paper fiber. Um, so there is, there is increasing amount of interest here in terms of this combination particularly um, uh, in, in many packaging uh, options. So you look, start looking at some of the, the, the uh, applications, the product applications and you know, pet foods is a, is a good example of that. It's, it's, it, it often contains high amounts of grease or fat, fatty material which sort of requires a barrier. Um, so this is a, a, in fact, paper laminate in this instance of, of, of Hydropole. Um, and clearly you, you then have options towards driving it towards recycling by repulping, um, which currently there is no option or easy option to recycle that type of material. There is also uh, an interesting side effect, which you get good puncture resistance because of the tensile properties of, of the Hydropole material. So for example, a hydrobulb film at, at, at 15 microns is equivalent to um, the strength of a HDP film at 40, for example. Again, you've got some more examples of form, fill and seal systems uh, where we've, we've run on, on test lines to, to test the speed of the material, the sealability of the material, as well as obviously the construction itself. And again, you can then drive this uh, in this particular instance towards uh, towards a recyclable option by by repulping again so again a paper-based system you can do this with a film of course if you wanted to combine it with for example polyethylene that would be a, a, a different end of life and then obviously we have luxury packaging uh, where we've got often laminated or coated boards so replacing things like uh, uh, polypropylene which you, which causes some challenges to the recovery of the, of the paper and the paper board itself um, which often is diverted into landfill or incineration, whereas this allows essentially 100% re 
recovery and and the mills want you know the paper fiber that's what they want that's of value to them and and many of these paper options are not available because of of, of the other coatings that, that, that get in the way of that so they're often rejected at the front end of that mill so it does open up the potential to uh, a good message in terms of, uh, of of a functional material which which gives you recyclability and is recognized as i say um down the supply chain this is a quick whiz through really in terms of, of what we do this you know please feel free to get in contact with us ha very happy to share this brief presentation if anybody would like to see it but please get in touch with us if uh if you want to, to find out more about what what we do and, and our materials thank you very much Thank, thank you very much, John. Uh, really um, interesting. I, I love the um, 21st century use of FFS um, <laughs> in, in, in the packaging there. So um, the, there will be opportunity for questions in about uh, 10 minutes. So uh, we're just going to crack on with the next um, 10 slides. Hopefully you can see that, everybody. So without further ado, um, Italian... Um, multinational food company uh, and actually the world's largest pasta producer, Barilla, is uh, changing its famous pasta packaging. Um, the characteristic blue cardboard box is now being produced without a small plastic window. Um, the window was seen as, a, as an effective way for shoppers to get an idea of the size and shape of the pasta product um, and has been used extensively in food retail um, over the years, uh, but times are changing. Um, the growth of the e-commerce channel where shoppers do not select their own products for purchase um, combined with a strong desire to improve sustainability sees the window set to disappear. The plastic window will be dispensed with in order to make the packaging 100% recyclable. The change will take place, uh, I think, first of all in Italy and, and UK with other markets to follow. Um, we, in January, we also reported on um, Pucker Pies doing uh, a similar initiative where uh, they also took the window out of their uh, paper-based boxes. Uh, these aren't groundbreaking innovations from a technical perspective, but it is reflecting how the market is moving. So uh, a pragmatic view that consumers don't necessarily need to see the contents inside uh, in order to make an informed choice. Now, retailer Asda is pushing forward with their commitment to reduce uh, their own brand plastic in their packaging by another 15% by next year. Um, the, the supermarket has announced that it has become the first retailer in the UK to introduce 100% recyclable own label crisp tubes. The change will cut 98.2 uh, tons of non-recyclable packaging from Asda supply chain, the equivalent of 2.34 million tubes of crisps each year. Asda is switching the whole of its own brand snacks range into cardboard only packaging. Um, as you all know, crisp tubes are conventionally made from a combination of foil, metal and cardboard materials, making them non-recyclable. Um, we, we believe that this, although there's no, there was no information to hand, we believe this is Can Packaging, who are a French-based company, and just this week have um, been taken over by Sunoco, so they're, they're hot in, on the news at the moment. That's who we believe is the maker of that uh, packaging. Um, now, this has created quite a stir uh, this month. Um, the, the Loop Online Refillable Container Scheme has arrived in the UK. Uh, Tesco is trialing the online scheme where shoppers can get a range of 150 items when it's fully up and running, which will be delivered in reusable containers. The, the Loop scheme has been uh, tested already in the United States and France, and we've featured that in Innovation Zone. This includes big brands, owners such as Kraft Heinz, Coca-Cola, BrewDog, Beersdorf with their Nivea, and Henkel with Purcell. And they've all signed up for the UK scheme amongst others. Um, if you don't know, products are delivered to customers' doors, much like uh, the old milk round, uh, Milkman. Uh, in, in, these are delivered in durable containers that are then collected, cleaned, and sent out again. Shoppers pay a deposit fee on each piece of packaging, which is refunded when the containers are returned. Um, and, and this can be done by scheduling a pickup from, 
from their home or eventually by uh, dropping off at one of two and a half thousand collection points across the UK. Um, they're intending to roll out to the scheme to the bricks and mortar Tesco branches next year. Um, I did. I, I tried this. So the, the day it came out, I, I, I ordered three or four items. Extremely impressed with the uh, the interface and how quickly and easily it was to order stuff. Um, it is a little bit middle class at the moment. Uh, I bought four items, and with the deposits, including the tote, which is ten pounds, I spent about twenty five pounds. Um, you have things like Noise Organic toothpaste at eight pounds, and organic chestnut cream, if that was ever a thing, seven pounds fifty. So the only sort of comment I have, I'm very positive about this, is that it, it is a little bit um, pricey in terms of the types of uh, items coupled with the fact you need to have a deposit for each one. Um, home compostable cling film. So um, this is from New Zealand. Uh, cling wrap is traditionally made of a variety of plastics and is therefore not recyclable. Auckland-based Compostic uh, has created a, what they claim is a world first cling wrap that can be composted at home. It has launched its uh, its cling wrap in their native market and around 130 New Zealand retailers stocked the wrap so far. Um, the company's compostable wrap and resealable bags were made of a blend of three biopolymers and uh, the TUV Austria certification claims that it will break down within 12 weeks in industrial composting and 24 weeks in home compost conditions. Um, in February this year, we uh, tracked Novamont with a compostable cling film development. And just this week, um, the Great Wrap cling film brand has uh, come to our attention from Australia. So we'll be writing about that in the Innovation Zone database. Leading packaging and paper manufacturer Mondi is developing a recyclable monomaterial film. Um, for Austrian meat producer Huthala's products. The film structure means uh, that it's fully recyclable and has a good barrier to protect food as well as extend shelf life. Um, the packaging change sees the use of raw materials reduced and, and uh, apparently efficient machine runnability has also been guaranteed. Um, the Independent Institute for Recyclability and Product Responsibility, the Institute Cyclos HTP, has given the new film their highest classification, AAA, for recyclability. Next up, L'Oreal has introduced uh, their patented cardboard-based packaging solution for its Garnier, Garnier uh, Organic Hemp brand. Uh, we've reported on similar iterations of this in the past. This is just an uh, example of the brand coming to market. Um, the new pack incorporates almost half of the plastic conventionally used uh, for, for tubes of this type. Um, and is part of a rollout of, of similar packs that we've we've tracked in recent times. Um, the plastic has been replaced with a bio-based and certified paper-like material. And the tube is made with 49% less plastic and also includes a light-weighted cap. Henkel's organic beauty brand NAE has initiated a, an e-commerce pilot um, across European markets of Germany, France and Italy. The solid cosmetic products will be available exclusively with e-commerce giant Amazon. Uh, the box contains a face body and shampoo bar, as well as a reusable soap pouch. Uh, the box is made with 100% uh, paper and is ready paper based and is ready for shipment without use of any secondary packaging. So therefore, looks to comply with Amazon's ships in own container policy. Uh, importantly, the boxes fit through any regular leather box as well to improve efficiencies. Um, the boxes are ready to dispatch and do not need to be additionally packed, which allows for supply chain simplification and cost reductions. Three more, I believe. Um, this is AR Packaging in France, who have uh, introduced a paper-based solution called SafeBoard. The initiative is being embraced by Bell Group for its Borsan uh, flavoured cream cheeses. Um, the change reduces, uh, takes away 35 tons of plastic removed from the supply chain annually. Uh, and um, SafeBoard is a solution that removes the plastic coating on the cardboard packaging whilst also maintaining uh, the necessary uh, pr product protection and performance. Now, um, this was, I mean, this is, it seems like a lot, age ago, it came out about three weeks ago. Um, 
Frugal Pack introduced a 94% recycled paper-based wine bottle, which created a lot of attention and we covered last month. Uh, Diageo has also joined the party uh, with um, a potentially groundbreaking Johnny Walker sustainably sourced pulp bottle. The contents are reportedly protected by a resin rather than a, than a plastic one. Uh, got highly guarded secret in terms of what makes up this resin. Um, the, it delivers the necessary barrier to hold the liquid in, but it's claimed it will disintegrate post-use. The bottle is then therefore fully recyclable and made from sustainably sourced pulp. Um, and it's declared to be the world's first paper-based and plastic-free spirits bottle. Um, Carlsberg have been um, reported uh, attempts to create a paper beer bottle for four or five years now, um, and they announced last year that they're a, a step closer. So we watch that development with interest. So in in uh, the last one, um, this is from Ferrero. Uh, this is um, they've. Uh, introduced a, 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 um, a, uh, a patent for a packaging solution for food products that reduces the development of mold and bacteria. The film incorporates a mix of natural origin active elements um, such as tree olive, uh, uh, tea tree oil, ethanol, and essential oils. Um, in preliminary tests, the Ferrero's patented solution saw food wrapped in the new film remain fit for consumption for 80 days. Uh, um, and there was a barely uh, any product weight loss. Uh, no control information was for comparison was available at the time. So that's a, a, another interesting innovation from Ferrero in um, in Italy. So in summary, um, the summary is very similar to uh, the last month. So the sustainability will continue to be a major focus. Signs that the innovation funnel is returning to something like the new normal, whatever that might be. Uh, recycling growth um, is really driven by leg legislative necessity and these 2025 deadlines that most brands and retailers seem to have. Um, more carbon reduction focus, we, we believe, is coming through um, with a little bit less plastic elimination, but it still will be significant. Possible biodegradable packaging will get more mainstream applications. And as I said a number of times, the refillable and reusable market will continue to expand quickly. And that has definitely been noted this particular month. So over to Barry, uh, have we got any questions for, uh, for discussion, please? Yeah, um, majority of them are, I think all of them, in fact, are aimed at John. I see John has indicated <laughs> he's happy to answer them live. So, uh, John, are you online? I am, yeah. So do you want to cover off the questions that have been directed at Aquapol? Yeah, can do. Uh, just got them up but now, Barry, so. do you want to read out the questions so 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 John can answer them? Is that easier? Yep. It's um, can hydropole be recovered from wastewater after recycling of coated paperboard to make it more comp um, compatible with the circular economy? Would this process be energy intensive? Yeah, in principle, it can be recovered from solution. Obviously, it depends on on the concentration of the materials to whether that is then worthwhile. So we have done some work um, with, with one of our co-partner universities, actually. Uh, we, have a, we have some IP on the recovery. It's fairly straightforward. It's not a particularly energy intensive process. Uh, it just involves uh, a, basically a chemical step to, to take it out of solution and, and then recover it. But as I say, I think you, know, it, you need a reasonable percentage concentration to make that worthwhile. I think the sort of indications are at the moment in relative terms because of the coat weight etc it probably wouldn't be worthwhile so you'd probably go through a biodegradation in the, in the wastewater process but yeah i mean the answer is short answer is yes we can um next question would, would a laminate of pe pvoh be recyclable with pe have trials been done to assess the rules on evoh change frequently are the recyclable rules for pvoh similar <laughs> Um, we, we did some, uh, we have done some work on, on different laminates of which uh, PE was one um, uh, that was aimed at a particular application. Um, uh, I mean, technically, um, you know, it's like all, recycling, as you all know, is, 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 is somewhat of a minefield. There's, you know, is it recyclable? Yes, it is. Um, can, can you relatively easily remove the PVOH layer from the PE? Um, yes, you can um, it, by, by the use of, of uh, hot water solutions and agitation will remove the, the PVOH layer from the PE. 
um, and lead clean VE. Uh, we are in discussion with a number of, of the major waste co companies to, to look at the, 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 how they would look at that in terms of a mixed feed waste streams, et cetera, and identification. I mean, clearly you can also identify the hydropole layer as well by IR if you have that facility available to it. In terms of the recycle rules, they are changing. It's a question actually we got asked about on PVH, which we are now checking. So I don't have an answer for that yet. But uh, if somebody, if you'd like to come back to me, I think it's Paul East, is it? Uh, come back to me with my email. I've got some more detail on that, but it, it's a fairly long discussion. actually. Okay, um, possibly a quicker one to answer now. Can Aquapack be used for coffee bean packaging, pouches or boxes with the right barriers? Can the application be sealed on a production site, i.e. heat sealed? Um, short answer to that is, is yes, it, it can, um, without giving anything away. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, more of a sort of a, a slightly less technical question, more of a sort of a, a consumer-based question here. How do you respond to the fact that Hydropole looks exactly like normal plastic? Uh, it's difficult to visually recognise it as a consumer, as a more sustainable solution with its own characteristics. Um, yeah, it's the, I, I get it. Um, and, and obviously plastics tend to look like plastics. Um, and, you know, whether they're, whether they're bio-based or, or, or petro-based, I, I, I think all we can do is continue to educate the difference between the plastic types and what options are available to, their, to, to a true end of life and a true circular economy solution and, and how easy that is. So that, that, that's as far as I can go, really, in terms of sort of making the consumer instantly recognize it it's always been a challenge and i think to be perfectly honest it always will be a um, couple of sort of similar questions that have popped up on the chat rather than the question um, box um, i see in the i see the paper plus evoh in pouches on your slides can you run high speed on vertical form feel seal machines um, we we have run um, several trials uh, successfully um, one comment from one of the 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 form fill and seal guys was that he could run that at the same speed uh, as, as he would a normal form fill and seal line with which was entirely plastic which which did take them by surprise so because of its tensile strength i think you've got a lot of play in that in terms of the way it performs on those systems and then i, I think a, a sort of a, a almost related question can a hydropole be used in place of bopp packaging um i guess it depends on on the end application and, and so forth. Um, you, you can orientate the film similarly to, to polypropylene and, and get different properties. Uh, I think it does, you know, I'm very happy to, to, to take that offline and, and say what, what's the application they're thinking of. Yeah, and I, I think you've already responded. There's been a lot of requests for your slides. Um, I think yeah. all these slides will be going out with all the others, won't they? And your contact details will be on there. So I think if right. people have very specific technical questions or applications, then uh, best to contact you directly, John, and, and go from there. Absolutely, very happy. And if anybody wants to visit our facility in, in Birmingham, our manufacturing facility, they're very welcome to do so. Okay. Thank you, John. I think that thank concludes you. the questions, Paul. Thank you, Barrington, and thank you, John. That was uh, most fascinating, brilliant. So, um, two minutes, um, just to announce that uh, we're uh, making available our sustainable packaging compendium uh, a PDF only uh, for just £299, so more information will be available uh, with um, all the outputs from, from today's uh, webinar, which will obviously include uh, John's presentation, um, the, the, the recording of, of the webinar um, um, as well. Uh, so next up is uh, our next webinar will be um, Thursday, the 3rd of September, again, uh, the two times of uh, this time and also 1 p.m. Eastern time, which is 6 p.m. Uh, UK. We are reviewing our um, webinar platforms. We, we continue to get people frustrated with Zoom, not able to attend. I've had three or four messages this morning for people that couldn't get on. So we are reviewing that. And um, we, 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 the next one, we may actually have a different, um, different platform. So um, I'd like to thank you all for your attention. I'd like to and uh, see you all again next time. Thank you.